Good evening, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Dumb Eye TV. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for brand new content. This your boy, Go Mouth Short. Let me get straight down to business. Today, we're going to talk about the beef between Suge Knight and C Murder. Now, a lot of y'all don't even know about this beef, but I'm going to tell y'all about it. You know what I'm saying? This is a good one, so y'all get your popcorn, man. And make sure you hit them cash apps, MAG Promo, M-A-G-P-R-O-M-O. -O. Let me get straight down to business. Now, this beef started when C Murder was putting out his projects. And uh, Suge Knight noticed that, you know, uh, that, you know, it was a lot of sampling going on and he was checking out C Murder track listing and he seen a lot of generic titles and, you know, he thought it made, uh, made people think that he was trying to be Tupac. So Suge had a problem with that, you know what I'm saying? So... Uh, Suge Knight was trying to stop No Limit from putting out projects uh, up on the C Murder, man, because it had a whole bunch of rip-off tracks, allegedly, you know what I'm saying, and sampled, uh, like, uh, backgrounds, and, you know, it was just a lot of stuff going on that was not creative, and it was like, they was resampling, bringing Tupac music back, and sure didn't like it. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, he had a major beef because, you know what I'm saying, Tupac was dead, and, you know, uh, Snoop had went and signed to No Limit. You know what I'm saying? But see, Murder was like, man, I'm paying homage, man. You can't tell me I can't rap about uh, somebody I surmise music. You feel me? So... Should sure, kind of understand that, understood him. So he didn't never put no deceased in desist letters, but you know what I'm saying? They tried to. So, you know what I'm saying? P went over there and paid him, you know what I'm saying? But when Should sure started going through the catalog with his lawyers and some of his management team, he noticed, this man, P owed him a lot of money, a lot more money from all this sampling. So he went out to P again. And P paid the man. But you know what I'm saying? C Murder just kept making samples. You know what I'm saying? Like riding on my enemies and stuff like that. And you know, uh, death, life after death, like Biggie Smalls. You know what I'm saying? He was just tapping in. You know what I'm saying? Making a good album. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, Sure, Knight didn't like it because he seen C Murder making a lot of money off of it and he wasn't getting paid. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, C Murder said he ain't had no problem giving the money to, uh, I meant to, uh, Tupac's mother. You know what I'm saying? And some money went to her estate and, you know, Sure got his money and everybody was happy. You know what I'm saying? And then out the blue, C Murder was hearing a lot of junk, a lot of noise because, you know what I'm saying, uh, when they was at a show, you know what I'm saying, some of Death Row Boys pulled up and they had allegedly put hands on Snoop Dogg and Dash and had them boys running. But Suge them was in jail, you feel me? Suge actually was in jail, but he sent his goons to go confront Snoop Dogg, you know what I'm saying? Cats like K9 and Wack 100 and uh, what's the one dude named BJ, the Bounty Hunter Blood. All them cats, they ran up and up, you know what I'm saying? Because they hardest artists back then was the dude Crooked Eye. They was trying to get Crooked Eye on, you know what I'm saying? So they ran up and up, you know what I'm saying? Slap sugar, uh, Snoop around a little bit and dash, dash them, ran, called the cops. But P them didn't know what was going on because they was on stage. And uh, this happened out there in Los Angeles. So what ended up happening was C Murder went and wrote a song after he heard what happened. And it was, uh, you other, because I'm down for my, you other, Cause I'm down for my, y'all know what song that is. You know what I'm saying? He came up with that song and he just let him know I'm the dude on the tank with the big balls 
And if anybody messes with Snoop Doggy Dog, he gonna make his dog put his name on the wall. You feel me? He was just letting you know, hey, do that on my watch and it ain't gonna go down like you thought it was. Y'all came to attack Snoop, but y'all finna get something else. You know what I'm saying? He just ain't no country boys. You know what I'm saying? But sure was laughing from his cell because, you know, as soon as they had attacked it, Snoop should uh, call Master P and let Master P know what was going on. You know what I'm saying? Because Master P had a line of contact with him because they was always still doing business. A lot of people don't know. A lot of that music that was coming out on uh, No Limit, every album was getting cleared through Suge Knight because they had so many samples and stuff in it. You know what I'm saying? So, P them used to have to get a lot of stuff cleared. And, you know, the most easiest man to get stuff cleared was through Jimmy Iovine and Suge Knight at the time. You know what I'm saying? Because all them cats, you know, uh, sample almost the same stuff. And, and at one point in time, all of them was on the same label and they all had cubicles in the same office. Aftermath, uh, No Limit, and uh, Death Row. Not to mention uh, Pooh Banging. All that, that's how uh, Master P got Matt 10 because Matt 10 was walking to Death Row. Matter of fact, uh, Snoop Dogg was walking to uh, go into Who Banging office, and then uh, Master P had a, a cubicle there too, and he spotted him, and then he signed him because Who Banging had an office there, uh, Ice T had an office there, Master P had an office there. Uh, everybody had their own labels, man. They had their own office. You feel me? So them boys been doing business together. But that F the Mother Niggas, that was a big song, man. He put Snoop Dogg on it and let him know, man, if somebody ever bother you again, we going to kill him. But y'all didn't realize that if you go look at the video, the video was shot in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, y'all want to know why they shot it in Atlanta, Georgia? Nah, because they went to Pastor Troy Hood. Because she murder just went ahead and killed two stones at one time. He went out to Shug Knight and the Death Row Boys. And then on top of that, he shot the video in Pastor Troy neighborhood. Because they was ready to beat him up, too. Because, you know what I'm saying, they couldn't get to Shug. Shug was in jail, but Pastor Troy was on the street. So they went and shot a video in his neighborhood with all the tank dogs. And, you know what I'm saying, uh, Pastor Troy was a no-show. He knew about the video shoot. You know what I'm saying? He just didn't go because he knew what was going to happen. When P them shoot a video, it's at least a week long. So all that stuff that went on in that big old video with uh, police squad cars, Atlanta police, man, everybody knew about that video shoot. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people don't know that was in past Detroit hood. And see, murder ain't nothing to play with. You know what I'm saying? I hope Shug Knight realized that piece of mine.